Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show yet again. This is going to be a short one just to show you how you can possibly, yes, how you can possibly, believe it or not, make your own maggots. Now most people just go into a tackle shop and buy them. I've actually been to a maggot farm and in one of my books, I think it's Freshwater Fishing Basin many years ago, I actually did a whole detailed article, start to finish, all the different maggots, the flies, how they did it, it's horrific. But of course, all we do is walk straight into the tackle shop, give them our bait container, they fill it up, we give them some money and we go fishing. But you can make your own maggots and years ago people used to do that. Now here's what I'm going to do, I'll show you outside. Now I just got back from a trip to Southern Ireland and I've got in my little bait container down here, a chunk of mackerel and a packet or two of sand eels. I've never used sand eels before, but the first thing I've put these out, and obviously they hustle because I've had to drive like 20 odd hours coming from Southern Ireland, got on the ferry, so they've been cooking in the car for a while, I didn't open the lid yet, but some characters have already found it. Now these little chappies are called green bottles. You can see that sort of tinge of green on them and they're slightly smaller than the larger fly which we get over here in the UK called the blue bottle. Or at least I think that they're uh, you know, a little bit different size, smaller. But they're anxious to get inside that box. So what I'm doing is lining this old fishing box with newspaper. As not to give the prospective maggots a read, it's to keep any juices moistened in there so it doesn't stick to the side or make it wriggle out. Here is the offending mackerel that I've been using fishing previously and that is absolutely ideal for starting those, get those maggots on there, get those eggs laid by the flies. You've got to get those flies in and trust me, there's some sandals as well. I've not used sandals before, that's something new to me. We'll see how they go. They're laid out, they're cooking in the sun, the green bottles have found them. There's going to be some house flies and blue bottles finding them, and we should get some action here somewhere. Okay, just 24 hours, not even that, 12 hours next day, there are in fact blue bottles and flies all over the fish. Now you might be able to see the little white powdery bits just down here, and there, I'm going to zoom in on them because I'm going to show you those are actually the flies that have laid their eggs on there probably last night and today and they've done it all over the eye as well you can see if I can get in there for you now each of those white dots are actually eggs laid by the flies that are going to hatch out into maggots just go over here absolutely smothered there and you can actually see the shape of the maggot I don't know how close I can get with this Maybe not as close as I thought, but I'm hoping you can see those there. Cheek, eyeball, everywhere, and then back down here. Some in by the back as well. And they're going to hatch out and start eating there. And there's the flies probably just in there. Don't want to disturb him. And you can see there's a blue bottle of fly down there laying more eggs. So we've got what they call a blow. That's called a blow. And that's what they do commercially is get a blow, get the fly lay, get them to lay the eggs normally on a fish and then they feed them off to get them bigger than maggots. When they get the blow and they hatch out on the fish, they've eaten their way through it, they want it to get bigger, they put them on generally dead chickens, dead baby chickens from batteries is a normal, that's how I filmed it before when I did do it. Not much I've noticed on those sand eels, on the mackerel which is very very oily. In fact if anything I say on the sand eels are a smaller egg, probably laid by a smaller species of fly. So two different species laying different size eggs here. See if I can zoom on them for you. Now there, in fact there's no question of that, I can see there, the larger eggs there, and if we come across here, down there on the sand hill, you can see a much, look, looks a much smaller, there's two different species of flies. Now I want to make sure they don't get wet, keep them dry, be better in the sunshine, because it would all rot down better. But I reckon in two days those are going to hatch out and they're going to start eating and hopefully if the cat, the dog, or somebody doesn't complain about the smell, cats and dogs, they'll probably eat them. Hopefully we'll be able to show you the maggots live. Oh man. Just as an aside, here's a picture of flies on a piece, tiny piece of squid. Now, this was when I was beach fishing with Mike doing another film and I had a strip of squid, but I did notice even down on the beach, they were on it in, well, 30 seconds swarming it. So in fact, squid might be a good material to use for maggot making. Well, I looked at them three days later, and I thought, that's strange, they don't seem to have hatched out. And then I thought, hmm, hang on, 
I can I can see the fish moving. There is life there. So you can see here, there's actually activity in there with the maggots. You can see some few dead ones on the paper. Who knows why they're dead? And uh, you can see that a lot of the meat has already been eaten away, just leaving the juice, I guess, the blood and guts. And of course, maggots eat everything. If those of you who don't know, they do or did years ago. I don't know if they still do it nowadays. Probably not use maggots to clean out dead human flesh and they would only eat the dead flesh in a wound i believe in the first world war they used it not the healthy flesh so you should be able to see that all those bubbles there bubbling up is actually being made by the maggots eating their way inside the body and i assume as they're traveling up and down the, the, that, that is actually the air coming out of them. That's how they're breathing in all that juice there. But as you can see, they're hatched out. They are feeding. Everything is moving. Everything is eating. And they seem to be traveling out and moving into a hole they bored there. All pretty disgusting, but all future bait for fishermen. Right, it's another day and I've come out to have a look and just look at the different shape that the fish has been eaten into. They really want to touch, but along here, they've eaten all the meat underneath and they've just left the skin and the head and they're eating it from the inside out. Now, if I just zoom in there, now that looks devoid of life. There is one maggot there going across, you can see him. And they're inside eating, but listen, let me just turn it over and you'll see what's underneath. I'll just get this way, put the paper in the bottom. Oh my god, there are loads of them. That is amazing. They've eaten their way through the paper. Now, what I'm going to do now, as you can see, they've gone through now. You can see I've disturbed them. They're eating their way, doing really nicely. Now, I'm going to put some brown on there to dry it up. Just like this, because there's a lot of oil in there. And that just stops them climbing out the sides. Because if they get wet, you must not let this get wet. You must not let it get wet, you want to keep it dry. And that oil has gone underneath, so I'm just going to sprinkle a bit of bran in there, like this. Now, you can see how many are in there now. Wiggling away, and also, this does soak up some of the ammonia smell that you get on them. There's not an inconsiderable amount of maggots in there. There's certainly, when I tell them I'm fattening them up, enough to go fishing. They've eaten their way. I think they've eaten the newspaper as well. And now's the time to give them a bit of a bonus. Leftover barbecue meat there. Bits and pieces. I'm sure they're going to enjoy it. And we'll see. Let them strip those bones down. There's still plenty there to eat. Even down there. I'm going to turn this one over for you. If I can get a spike in this, yuck. There you can see they're eating their way right through it. So, all looking good people, they're not rating these too much. These are the sand eels. They are eating them, but nothing like the softer mackerel. So, I reckon another couple of days and I shall be ready for fishing with them. So you can see, they're all wriggling around. Obviously, I could grow them on larger. If I wanted to feed them on more, I'd put them on chicken. So with all that activity down there, there's only one thing to do with these maggots now. We've got them to this stage. We've got our bait. Let's take them fishing and see if I can catch anything. I'm going to try for roach. Now first, before I actually go fishing, I've got to riddle these off, and I'm using these riddles. As you can see, with lots of little holes in them. You can get them from most tackle shops. I put in there the bits of carcasses and paper, the maggots wriggle through into a bin I've got below, and then I can put them in some bran to get rid of the ammonia smell. And what I'm doing here, obviously I could do a much bigger volume than I would do here normally, but this is just to show you how the system works. So I just take basically just a handful of bran, put it in the bait bucket or bait box there, and then I'm going to get these maggots out. They're a little bit sticky because obviously mackerel is a very oily fish, but look at the big clump of maggots in there, and this will help sort of clean them up and get rid of that ammonia smell and make them much nicer to use on the hook. I'm here at Watmore Farm Fishery, and I'm going to try and catch a few roach. I've thrown some maggots 
and some tiny two mil pellets which I figure is about the same size as a maggot just over the edge which I always do here I went back to the car because I'm so weak now I can't carry the chair and all the equipment in one go I come back how long's that seven minutes I'd say down there carp are ripping the bottom up to get at these maggots and these pellets I'm hoping I'll be able to show you man alive their tails are out the water just look at that not often you see this people look at that digging there let me go in on it look, look how close look how close that is I mean they're rip one two three four carp there I reckon there's more than that because that was clear water when I first started absolutely clear I could see the bottom I could see a little one inch fry like that and they're mulling my maggots I'd better get some on the hook and get them out there because I feel a fish coming pretty pretty immediately Well this has sort of taken me a bit on the hop because I didn't expect to see such big carp down that close, that quickly, that early on. Maybe about half past six, seven, maybe one might move in, but there's a pack of them there. I've rigged up and I'm gonna do this. I'm not bothering with buzzers, I'm just gonna watch a crash take. They are so close. I've got here about a size 14 hook barbless. I'm straight on, six pounds straight through. I fear I don't need to go with a small hook, which was what I was gonna do because I only got small maggots. It's about a number four shot there. I'm going to lower that down. I've got my match rod. God knows what a carp's going to do to this. For my roach, obviously, with a tiny little float there. So it takes, I think, four number four or something like that. I've got, I think, a BB and something else on there. Again, about five, six pounds straight through. A couple of shot. Shirt button style just there. About size 14 barbers. Fairly basic. I'm going to try just to lower the maggots down first. To scatter a few small ones in put four or five on this hook I can't see the rod staying on the ground very long I'm not even using rod rest I want to keep that low it's very very windy beautiful fabulous day but windy so if you've got wind in the mic guys you're gonna to have to live with it this is an experiment to see if my homemade maggots actually work I always like dropping a little bit of bait even when I'm fishing in the middle or the distance uh, casting swims I like to drop something in close so what I'm doing is just putting the maggots right down where I've seen those others rooting and digging around, trying to keep them as tight in as I can. And that way, they I'm hoping anyway, they won't see my fishing line. Well, guys, there's a million roach there, but there's also a carp. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and lay the rod down and go right up and actually hook this fish that I can see moving around down. There's two of them by hand first. So I'm actually holding the line in my hand, the rod tops behind, the right over my shoulder, waiting for a hookup. <laughs> we're on guys, we're on. <laughs> there you go. That's what you call point blank carp fishing there. Couldn't do any more than catch it. Or try and catch it. Holding the line in the hand. It took me a while to get the fish hooked up, by no means is it landed, but you can see how close those fish came. That's about eight maggots. Those maggots, my own maggots, and he's, unfortunately guys, he is smoking me out. As always, a good scrap here at Watmore. I think it's a deeper water, because it's quite deep out there, and they come in the margins. But they seem to be really good condition. Scrap and scrap. A bit too much, especially when I get, when I get one in for you. Miracar. I'm actually looking down here to see if there's any more fish mopping up the maggots. No, we spooked them all for the moment. Wow, is he going? Probably he's about three pounds, he's not. Oh. Homemade maggots. Do they work? I think so. Oh. That guys, I'm gonna put the mat over here. Look at this one. That, I would imagine, I haven't bought my scales, I'm not really bothered, but I suppose he's seven pounds at least, might shade a little bit more. Crackerjack fish, as we say here on the Totally Awesome Fishing Show.
<laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, I knew there was roach here. But look, it just goes to show you, a bunch of those maggots are the same as the shop ball ones they set. Well, obviously they're extremely fresh because I've only just taken them off, riddled them off as you saw. Oh yeah. <laughs> I went a little bit deeper. I thought, you know what? I could see them small little things like this taking taking them off the surface. So I guess I wonder if the bigger roach are down deeper. And that's very often the way. Little tip there, guy, totally awesome tip. Bigger fish very often do go down. About three feet down, underneath the little ones. I knew he was gonna jump, I knew he was gonna jump. They get all frisky when they want to go on YouTube. So there you go, it shows you. I'm going to keep fishing, Let's put him back. Just, that just shows you, you can make your own maggots. Yes, it's much easier to go to a tackle shop, of course it is, but I got a great deal of satisfaction from catching that carp by hand laying on my stomach, hand lining, and I'm going to knock roach out as long as I want this evening on the maggots I've got left. As you see, it's not many at all. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Hit that subscribe button. Stick with us, we'll stick with you. Oh, don't forget, watch Mike's outdoor show because he's doing it full time now. There'll be the odd film going up there and it's all free. I just wish this wind would stop. Now, I just want to show you the bites. Watch my float there. It's going to the left. Can you see it go to the left? That is actually a roach bite. Wait for it. See it pulling out the frame there. You can strike. Look, there's a rope. Didn't even pull the float under. I'm going to do it again. I put the float in the swim, waiting for it to caught one bite. Just watch two bites. I can see these bites. They just did, that was a lift bite in there as well. There it goes, fish on. Now I had three bites before I had that fish. So hopefully you can always look at that little sequence again and you'll see the float does not always have to pull under to indicate a bite for a roach if they're particularly tricky. Watch the float. Concentrate on the float. There's a bite there. I'm just going to do it again, put it into the swim. It's sinking at the moment, but because it's slow sinking, it hasn't cocked. I know that the roach are already hitting the bait. Now the float didn't even cock that time, so they'll stop the float cocking. We'll try it again, different type of bite. See, it stops the float cocking. Now the shot's taking the down, one bite. Just wait for it, you keep concentrating on the There's a drift left, that's a bite, strike. Fish, you see the float did not go under. So you really need to be on the ball with some of these roach bites when you're using maggots. I'm gonna show you another bite, just so that youngsters and kids get used to it. It does not always pull the float under. There's one bite. That's how they go, standard bite, I would call that. One lift bite. Watch it, here it comes again. Just give it a movement, lift it up, put it in a different section of the swim. The maggot's sinking, the roach gonna be on it. There's a swing left, see that's a bite. One bite I saw there, concentrate on the float, and you see how little it moves. Drifting left, that's a bite. I see the float drifting left, probably sucked it in and blew it out. There's the bite followed up. Watch this again, just so you get used to watching for bites. They're not always ripping the float straight under. It can drift sideways, it can lift up, what we call lift bite. Just watch the float there, there's one bite, and look, float didn't go under. Well, yes, I couldn't resist it. It was one of those proverbial many last casts. As many maggots I could get on the hook as I, I possibly could. I could see a big tail digging and look at that beauty. On my own homegrown maggots, what a fish. Lovely common. Once again, I shall say, thanks for watching the totally awesome maggot growing show.